Hi everyone, this is Jeff, and this is the third of a three-part training series on how to use the MechWarrior Online game art assets and 3D programs such as Blender. This series is focused on Blender, but a lot of the information can be used for other 3D programs such as 3D Max or Maya and so forth. In addition, a lot of the procedures used in manipulating the MW assets can also work for other CryEngine games such as Star Citizen, so once you master these basic skills, you'll be able to apply them to other games. Please be aware of all applicable copyright rules and don't steal. Thank you. All right, let's get started. This session will focus on the last part of importing the game's assets, uh, rigging and animation. Rigging is essential to being able to easily pose a mech and animation lets you bring them to life. Uh, first, a couple of housekeeping items. Remember when I said you needed to convert all the DDS image files to either a PNG format or JPEG? Well, rejoice, because Blender now natively supports DDS format. Uh, this is great for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, you don't have to spend a lot of CPU and, and time converting these uh, image files in Noes, no, Noesis, Noesis, I don't really know how to pronounce it, never have. And in addition, with a native DDS format, you, can, you don't have to worry about having the messed up alpha channels that you get when it's converted to a PNG file, or if you have a JPEG, you don't have to worry about it converting it uh, or not having any uh, alpha channel. So that's good news. So if you see an earlier version of my video or the online tutorials, if you see me talking about converting the image files, you can safely ignore that. If you are using an older version of my script, be sure to change the, the image type to uh, DDS. And I'll show you where, I think I'm looking at Mech Importer here, yep. So we have Baster, which is where you're supposed to keep your, uh, your mech files. And then the image format is what image you're gonna use at. So since I'm not using JPEG, I'm using DDS. I'm gonna save that, and that way when I run the when I run the script, it's going to make sure to import the images as with a DDS extension. All right. Uh, second of all, Mech Importer has been updated quite a bit. It does generate all the um, the node groups for a particular mech. Uh, it works a lot better than it used to. There was it used to be a lot of bugs in it, and there probably still are. So if you do run across them, please contact me. I'll be more than happy to take a look at the issue and see if I can get it fixed. All right. So enough of the tutorial stuff. Let's get started. For today, what we're going to do is work on the Battlemaster, the iconic mech that uh, so many of you recognize. So as I mentioned before, I have eBlender Project Mechs. This is the base where I keep all my files. If I look, open up this view here, you can see uh, I, I move these over here. You should probably just ignore those. But you have the objects directory, and then you have the mechs directory under there, and then you have Battlemaster under there. And this is all the different files, including the and here you see all the object ones. You have the DDS, you can tell I already converted them to PNG here, but I'm not gonna use those anymore. This is a this is for putting in decals and stuff like that, it's kind of fun. Uh, but what we are particularly interested in for the script is you need the CDF file. So let's do mech importer, and then you do battlemaster.cdf, and it should make a file called import.txt, which we will open up. And then if you remember, you just copy it all, open up Blender, get rid of the box, so you don't need that, convert this to the Python console, I'll scroll it up a little bit, and then paste it in. And after it's done processing it, you will have a battle master. Oh, there it is. And it's a big one, isn't it? All right. Now, uh, I know some of them will come across with this uh, black texture. I'm not really sure why. When you render them, it does have the proper material on them. Actually, let's go to materials tab so we can take a look at this right now. So if you see that, don't worry about it. It's it'll it'll be fine. You do see that. Yeah, let's close our Python console because we don't need that anymore. Uh, some of the images look kind of goofy. You can tell that the UV mapping is wrong on these. That's because there's uh, three different types of materials in any given battle mech. You have the base ones, you have the variants, and then you have the cockpit glass, which is going to be in here somewhere. But what we're going to do is, and I'm going to just time lapse through this. I'm going to move all the weapon systems to the second second group, and I'm going to move the cockpit to the third. So is that the actual cockpit? Yeah, that looks like cockpit. Okay, so we're going to move that with M to the third layer. There is the glass. Uh, we're actually going to leave this one in the first one, and we might as well fix the material right here. So you have Battlemaster body. Battlemaster variant, which are going to be the weapons in Battlemaster window. So we select Battlemaster window for that, and that definitely looks a lot better. 
And then I don't like selecting the weapons through here because it's very easy to miss. I just go through the outliner here, grab them, and then move them to the uh, to the second layer. So I'm going to start going through and grabbing them. All right, that should be all of them. Let us move them with the M key to the second layer. So now you just have a blank battle master. And we'll do a quick look to make sure, well, this one still looks messed up. I'm not really sure what this object is. Forearm blank, all right, let's move him to the second one. And, yeah, that looks good. For some reason, this keeps on shifting to perspective mode, which kind of drives me nuts. And that doesn't look right either, does it? So let's move him. I think there's a Phoenix variant there. So Phoenix must be variants. And I bet you on this side will be the same way. Move it to two. All right, there's your basic battle master. You go to two, you'll see all the weapons and stuff like that. Let's make sure we get the right materials assigned for them. Just do the AMS one here. Battle master variant. All right, that looks like an AMS. Select all the items, make sure he's uh, highlighted yellow. Control L to copy the materials and then everything should be perfect. Oh, that's so much simpler than manually doing it. All right, this should all be familiar. This was all in the, in the second supplement, so there should be no new information here. All right, let's go back to the first one. We did the cockpit glass. We're not going to deal with the actual cockpit right now because that's complicated. There's a lot of vertex groups in there, and I don't feel like spending the 15 minutes necessary to get him all lined up. So back to this and actually we're going to select these both these layers here because uh, when we parent the rig to this we want to make sure it's parented to all the different objects on here. Now where is the rig? You don't want to necessarily create all the bone structures for this right from the get-go so let us go back to the file manager here the, and you go under body and you will see a file called battlemasters.chr Different mechs will have their own CHR versions of them, but this is basically the rig right here. Now you can't convert it to to OBJ format because that doesn't have the rig information in it. But I did find out that the Collada format or the DAE format will uh, maintain that rig information. So let's go to. I already have it here, but I'll show you how you how you do it with Gnosis. And then you go to uh, where the heck is that stupid thing? Uh, right here already open so you go to for me it's going to be mex objects mex battle master and body where is it okay, so here we are in gnosis uh, we want to convert let's see if we can get here we want to convert the chr file to a uh, collada so you go to file export uh, you want to change this, let's just change it to this, just so it's the same name. Change the object to Collada Format, which is a DAE extension. That's all you really need to do. Don't click on the Rotate 90 or you're going to see some really weird stuff happen. Uh, no animation, no textures, no geometry. There's no geometry, it's just a rig. You click on Export and that should be all there is to it. So if you go to your File Manager, whoops, your File Manager, you don't need that anymore you will have this uh, rig information. All right, so let's get started with importing the rig. All right, let's do this import. Kind of screwed up on this first take, so this might get a little disjointed, but let's go to import Collada. Under body, there is our uh, DAE file. We want to do import units to make sure that it uh, is imported to the same size as the battle master. Very important to do this, otherwise you have some scaling to do and you don't want to do that, so just check that button. Click import and there you go. It's kind of laying down, but that's okay for now. Did notice it does look like the battle master got really tiny, but it really didn't. What ended up happening is it changed the units to meters. The way you fix that is you go to the scene uh, in the properties and then you just select the units are none, and that will put it back to the right size. All right, now the next thing you want to do is get this rig to stand up. So you rotate around the X 270 degrees with RX270, enter, and he sh there he is. It's all standing up. Now you can't really see the rig because he's hidden by the body parts. All you can really see is this root bone here, which is standing up. We don't really want it standing up. 
we'll fix that later. Uh, but the way you make this a little bit more easy to use is you go to the objects and then under the display area you have this x-ray button which uh, makes them work as an x-ray. Makes it a lot easier to do stuff with them. Alright, one thing to keep in mind, there's a lot of really small bones in here that you can't see, uh, which is fine. We're going to make them bigger as uh, time goes on because you don't see any foot bones down in here. They're last. They're all probably hidden in this last little node on this uh, on this hip bone over here, but we'll get everything, or actually they may be down there, but just so small that you can't see them. And we'll, like I said, we'll get them all bigger. We'll bigify them. All right, what we want to do is parent the mech, all the objects, to this rig. So the rig will be the parent object, and these will be uh, affected by whatever you do to the rig. So like select all objects, unselect the camera and the light, because otherwise it'll parent it to it, and you don't really want to do that. Uh, click on the rig one more time, so it's the bright yellow color to make it the active objects. Then hit Control P as to set parent to, and then you want to do with empty groups. The object, or the the mech objects, all these different little pieces were brought in with a vertex group that corresponds to the uh, the bone name, which is one of the nice features of Mech Importer. It does all that for you. Uh, otherwise, you got to rename every bone to match the name of each of the objects, and it takes a long, long time. Uh, this just does it for you automatically. So anyway, Control P uh, with empty groups, and as you notice, all the objects went up under this armature here. You see them here because the armature is the parent. You still have the armature in here with the, this is I believe the root bone, and but uh, the end result is you now have a mech that you can move around. So if you grab the, in object mode, if you grab the rig, you can move it like that. Um, you can still move things like this, but it's you're, you're not going to be moving the, the mech anymore. You're going to be moving just the rig. Actually, what we probably should do is move this to a different layer. Let's move it down here. So now we can see all of them. And that way, if you just need to see the rig, you can do that or you can just select the objects that you want. To actually move the, the mech, you just go to pose mode, and you can grab something, and you can start doing all kinds of fun stuff with it. You can make him, you can rotate him, make him dance a little bit, kick his leg out. Uh, you know, I'm using R to rotate, G to grab. You know, you, it's since, since some of these bones are attached to other ones, even if you grab it, you won't be able to drag it away from the bone it's attached to, its parent bone but you, you know, it'll still rotate around that point. All right, so this is pretty good start. Uh, what else do we need to do? First of all, let's set the root bone to, uh, to be a non-deforming bone, make them face the right way. So let's first of all go to edit mode, because you can't really edit anything in pose mode. Let's take this guy and we're gonna rotate him around X 90 degrees. No, if we just grab this, this head and we drag it down, you can see that this bone is attached to it and it's doing all kinds of weird things. So let's scroll this down a little bit. I still don't think it's a. I think there's another bone in there somewhere. Now, this mech really has too many bones in the torso. This is more like a human model, and I think there's probably a couple more in here as well that you can't really see. But uh, in the mech, all you really need is uh, a, pel a hip bone right here. It's, it's called pelvis in here. Uh, and then a torso bone because. Nothing in here. There's no clavicles. There's no. There's no spine to rotate. This whole, whole thing. Go to pose mode. So if you rotate, you get Z, rotate X X, rotate Z Z, rotate Z. There we go. Um, that's that's the way robots work. Is they just rotate. They they don't bend. They just kind of rotate like that. So you really only need one bone, and it has multiple bones that do the same thing. As as you can tell. If you do this one, then it starts moving. It looks like the hip root bone. And then this is, of course, the whole, that's that's the actual root bone. All right, let's go back to edit mode. And I'm not really sure how to disconnect this guy. Alt P, disconnect bone. And I probably didn't want to do that because now it's probably all disconnected everywhere. But we're just gonna keep on powering through until we get this right. Rotate X, 270. Scroll him down or move him down to the bottom. Let's hit one so we can get a better idea where the bottom is. All right, that's good. And since he is a uh, uh, the root bone and doesn't actually deform any of the mech, see there it goes back into perspective mode on me. You go to the bone for the bone properties and uh, you select uncheck deform. So that is going to be how you 
make a proper root bone. All right, uh, so everything's parented. Now what we really want to do is get the bone set up to the right size. This is going to take a little bit of digging around. I'm going to uh, show a little bit of this right now. Let's work on this left arm here. Uh, so let's open this up. And there's the pelvis bone right there. Uh, you have the left side, right side legs, and then in the pitch is going to be the torso. Let's scroll him down. Then you have a spline, or I'm sorry, spine. Then you have spine one, which is this tiny little bone in here that you really can't even see. Um, we really don't even need this mech or, or this bone, but let's kind of make him, as you can see, the Y ended up being the same size, which is not good. If we change, uh, actually, we don't want to change the Y. We want to change the Z. Let's make him a little bit taller. So we'll take the head. Nope. Other one. I want to do this and grow him up a little bit. All right. And then you also have, it looks like another bone in there, spine two, who it looks like they're kind of related. And it's, it's interesting. So, so you have two parts of a, of a bone. You have the head, which is the, here, this is easier to see on one of these guys here. You have the head, which is the tip, and you've got the tail, which is the base. Um, when you rotate, uh, it's going to rotate around the base of the thing. Uh, it's going to rotate around the base of the bone. So if we go back to edit, and if you actually just go to pose, and we rotate here, you can see he's rotating around the top of it. And you rotate on this one, it rotates around the bottom. Same with this one, it rotates around the bottom. Um, there's, I can't think of any reason to, you're going to want to have multiple versions of these here. I, I, you're going to want a uh, upside down bone like this down here eventually, and we'll get to that. But uh, there's just so many extra bones here we don't need. Yeah we're just going to really ignore it right now. We just want to make sure they're all visible. All right, so let's go back. And our pitch, spine one, spine two, and then you have some clavicle bones. Those are shoulder pads, or uh, those are, those generally control the shoulders on a human model. But here you can see it's going to just rotate like that. Uh, this clavicle is attached to the upper arm, which will Control that. See, if you do the clavicle, it rotates this little uh, actuator here, and if you do this, it's just going to do the arm. Now, in theory, the arm isn't going to spin without this actuator moving, so um, technically you don't even need a clavicle bone on these. You just need to be able to rotate around here. But let's keep on going down this rabbit hole. You have a forearm bone, which, as you can tell, is uh, going to have the same issue as before. He's really small. So let's see if we can expand him out. Let's go to edit mode. And we want to move in the Y direction. We'll see if we can get him to grow in the Y. There we go. Nice. We'll make him a little bit bigger because that's going to come in handy. And this is a battle master, so it looks like he has fingers. I don't know if the fingers are rigged in this particular mech, uh, but let's keep on digging down and see what we find. We're working on what left side. So, uh, well, as you can see, there's a couple of extra bones in here too. There's a cockpit one, so if you want to grow the Y out here. You could probably parent this to the cockpit glass and you can make it so you can pop open the cockpit. Uh, that could come in handy. Cockpit cam. I think this is the bone that controls where the actual camera is set. We're going to grow them just a little bit because you're really never going to use these for what we're doing. This is game. So you know what? Let's just delete him. All right. We're not going to worry about him. Target one. No idea what this is. Uh, target two. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. And target three, yeah, those are just useless bones. So let's just get rid of them. X to delete. And we're going to keep the cockpit because we may in the future want to animate that, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. All right, so let's go back to left clavicle, upper arm, forearm. You do have a hand bone here. Um, so even though it doesn't look like it has finger bones, you're going to probably want to play with this one anyway. So let's move him out a little bit. Uh, it's yeah, let's go to pose and see. He's not actually he's not related to any objects in here. So for now, he's just a surplus item. Uh, again, we're going to keep him in case we ever want to create fingers and be able to animate these. This part uh, it doesn't hurt to keep him around. But the forearm, as you can see, controls the actual forearm here. So so if you want to rotate. On the Z direction, you can simulate the whole, you know, being able to uh, tra traverse your your arm-mounted weapons. 
So like I said, we're going to keep him. We're just going to not really worry about him right now. Let's go back on the, this side. Oh, you probably also want to create a bone for the AMS. I don't see one in here. I'm, it's probably controlled through a different manner, but we're just going to use the bones that we have right now and not really worry about it. All right, so this is going to be, we're going on the right clavicle side, right? And there's the arm, and we know it's got forearm in here, so let's go right clavicle, upper arm, forearm, go back to edit mode, and we're going to move the Y side out a little bit, try and make it match this other side as much as possible. All right, and then we're going to go to no, I jumped the wrong side, didn't I? Right clavicle, right upper arm, right forearm, right hand. So here's our hand bone, and we're going to, again, extrude him out a little bit, and not really use him too much. And then we have this target, which uh, for the arms and the legs, there are targets that you're going to do. We're going to actually use these to make the IK, IK bones. Let's see, we're going to use these as the elbow IKs. So I selected both target 4 and target 5. Uh, we're going to move them back a ways. And we're going to scale them in the y direction. And let's just copy this value. That would be the left one. Let's go with this one. And then we're going to paste it in here. And then that way they'll be the exact same size. Same with 3. Yeah, it looks like they were set at different z levels too. but. That's okay. All right. Those are going to be the the elbow IKs. So we're just going to leave those there for now. Uh, and actually, let's just do the IKs for the arms. Uh, let's. You're going to want two uh, two IKs for each arm. You're going to want the elbow one, which is going to keep everything. It's going to help keep the elbow straight when you're moving the hands. And you're going to want a hand one so you can grab the hand to uh, to to do some posing. Now, the way to make an IK bone is you're just going to want to grab the head of this uh, forearm bone, and we're going to want to extrude in the Z direction so it's easy and move him up. And then we're going to do the same over here, extrude Z, move him up. Now they're probably not the same size. I'm in perspective mode again because it keeps shifting on me. Hit three, let's grab him. Yeah, they don't quite line up, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. I just like being anal about it, so, all right. So to make an IK bone, you're going to actually want to detach him from the actual skeleton. Th these are two are still attached. You can see the lines that go to the bones, the bones that it's parent. But what we're going to do is Alt-P to control, to clear the parent. And for the hand bone, the, for the hand IK here, we're not going to disconnect it. So we're just going to Alt-P, clear parent. Um, and now these are also non-deformed non bones, so you want to click, make sure you uncheck those. Let's set up these elbow IKs, and they're normally supposed to be facing backwards. So let's do that, rotate on the X180, rotate X180, make sure these are set to non-deform, and let's rename all these bones while we're at it. So this one is going to be, uh, what do we call this? Uh, how about we're going to call it elbow ik dot r for right side. This one we're going to change to, and you can you can either do it up there or you can do it down here. So elbow ik dot l. Do I have my rights and lefts correct? Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, and then for this hand one, we're going to change this to arm ik dot R, and then for this one, we're going to change it to arm ik dot l. All right, and then we clear the parents. Let's do Alt P, and we're going to clear the parent on this one. Same with this one. Alt P, clear parent. All right. Now we just have four bones that we we created or reused in the case of these back here um, that aren't attached. So if you go to pose mode and you grab them, nothing's going to happen. Uh, that's because we need to set them up as say IKs. And the way you do that is you have to use, uh, what are these called? Bone constraints. Is that right? Yeah, bone constraints. All right, so what we need to do is add these constraints. And the way you do that is you select the IK bone, 
and then you select the target bone. So in the case of the elbow, you're going to want to do the upper arm. So you shift click that, and then you hit shift I to add an IK to the active bone. Now when it does it, the mech goes all wonky, falls back onto it, and that's just kind of normal. Uh, the way you fix that is it's all adjusted by this chain length. So for, for elbow ones, you're going to want to set the chain length to 1. Whoops, not iterations. You want to do chain length to 1. And he'll sort of kind of go back in the right position, but don't worry, that'll get better. Uh, let's do it same for the other side. That one, that one, shift I. Oops, that wasn't the right one. This guy, this guy, shift I, not control I. And then you want to change the change length, change the chain length back to one. If you do two, it goes too far. You want to do it, so it shows these uh, bones that are being affected by the IK are now this nice little yellow color. For the hands, we are going to select the hand IK, and then the forearm uh, bone. Shift I to active bone, and one, two. We do two for the hands. And you can see this is finally back in the right position. Probably should have done the hands first. Probably wouldn't have gotten it scary there. Same for this one, and then the forearm bone. Shift I, that, and then you go one, two. And there you go. Everything's back in the proper position. So now, in pose mode, if you select this, you'll notice this is a little bit different. You can grab this, and it uh, actually controls the upper arm based off of where you're moving this particular bone. Very handy feature. Now this elbow one helps keep it in line with the uh, uh, with where it's supposed to be, and you want to make sure that when you have these, you have them back far enough because if you get them too close, the, they try to they try to go towards that bone basically. So if you grab this, you can move the elbow out a little bit, like that. That's that's what he's doing, and if you grab him back. Uh, well, it's it's kind of hard to show in that one, but anyway, you need to have those to have it work out properly. So now we have the upper IK set up right. Let's work on the legs. All right, let's drill back down. Make sure we expand all these bones. Now let's work on the left side. Let's close this pitch. This one's going to be going up. So here's the right thigh. That looks okay. Uh, the calf looks like it's shrunk down to nothing. Let's go back to the bone properties. Uh, zoom in a little bit. I went back to perspective mode, you jerk. All right, we're going to go to edit mode. And since this is going to be uh, the, the calf bone, we want to just, uh, we don't want him to go forward. It's not, he's not that. So we want to do Z and we want to go, the head is going to be, well, let's see, let's go to the tail. Let's, how is this going to work? We can just go the opposite direction like that. All right. And then let's go to three, no, control three to get to this side. You can grab the tip here, and you can just uh, extend them out like this. Uh, just kind of line up, line them up along the whole. I never went back to perspective mode. I don't have to worry about it for now. All right. So anyway, that's the calf buried in there. You can see where these lines are going. There's going to be a foot bone in there, which is great. That's what we want. Uh, pitch expanded up too. All right. So left hip, left thigh, left calf. So that was that one. Now there's going to be a foot bone here, and the foot bone we're going to want to move forward a little bit. So let's take the Y, go forward. Good. Uh, this target six is going to be, I don't know what it's going to be. Let's just get rid of them for now. We, in, in the other, in the arms, we could use those to make IK bones, but we're just going to make our own IK bones. So let's delete him. So foot, so we have a heel, a talon, and a couple of toes here. Toe nubs. I always like that word, nubs. All right, so we've got the foot done. There's the foot, and we want to go to the heel. Uh, not sure what the heel is going to control. Let's move him in the negative y direction, like that. All right, let's go to pose mode. Rotate him. See, he's not really touch touching anything either. I was hoping it would control this back piece over here, but it doesn't look like that's the case. So let's go to edit. Let's just delete him. No need to keep bones around that don't do anything. Just confuses everything. All right, here's the talon. Uh, this is probably going to be the rear, rear one. So let's go back into the negative Y direction. Go to pose mode, rotate. Yeah, there we go. To X. Yeah, so we can make sure he's rotating up and down according to his constraints. 
All right, and then let's actually go to three, control three, and we're going to want to go to edit mode, rotate him a little bit so he follows the angle of the geometry there. Yeah, get back there. Okay, so that was that talon. And then on the toe, we have two toes in the front. Uh, this particular one is going to control. Let's find out. Let's move forward a little bit. Go to pose mode, rotator on X. It controls both of them. That's kind of handy. Let's kind of move him back. Although, you know, it's kind of, whoops. Uh, uh, what did I do? Rotate here. Let's move him back a little bit. And then we're going to, let's see, rotate X. And yeah, make sure that still works right. All right, that was the toe, toe nubs. Let's get these looking like normal bones too. Where did, oh, I'm in pose wrong mode, so here we go. So let's go back to toe helper, no, toe helper. Toe nub. Let's do toe helper, let's move him forward a little bit. I don't think this bone is gonna do anything. Yeah, all right, so let's go to edit, delete him. The toe nub, this one is gonna actually control probably nothing, all right. all right. So all we have is a toe and a talon in the rear, which controls this part right there. So let's go to edit mode, delete this one right here. This is actually a really simple foot. A lot of the mechs have much more complicated geometry. Each toe will have its own bone. Some of the toes, especially on things like uh, the bird, the bird, the chicken-legged uh, types of mechs are going to have three uh, three bones. You know, one for the base, and then a middle bone, and then a toe bone that you can all control. It's it's kind of nice. Uh, but this is just a very very simple mech here. All right, let's do the same thing on this side. Good, we got legs. Okay, we're gonna do the IKs again. Now, the way you do that is for the foot, which we're gonna we're gonna do the foot first because we didn't we did the the middle part of the of the limb on the other ones and it got all goofy on us. But we want to extrude from the foot bone. Where's my foot bone on this guy? Here's my foot bone over here. Yeah, I guess I didn't scale him up. Right foot. Let's move, scale forward in the y direction. All right. Looks like he's about the same position. All right. So what we want to do on the foot is, you know, actually let's take these guys, point them down a little bit to make sure that we can tell it the part of the foot. You know, have a nice little L shape here, so it's easy to see. So you want to grab the head. You're doing both of them, uh, and you're going to want to. Actually, I think we want to do it on tail. Let's do it on tail, and we're going to extrude in the y direction two bones like that. See, now we have identical sized bones. This one is going to be foot ik dot left. This one is going to be foot ik dot right. We're going to leave them connected, but we want to clear the parent. So Alt P, clear parent. Alt P, clear parent. And then we also want to do the same for the knees. We're going to extrude in the y direction. And then we want to Alt P to clear the parent. But in this case, we want to actually clear the parent. Uh, hang on, let's make sure we got the whole bone here. Actually, we have to do them separately, I think. So Alt P, clear parent. If we grab him, that will let him go forward. And again, same rules as the elbows. You want to make sure you move forward, far enough forward. Alt P, clear parent. Let's try and get these guys in roughly the same area. All right, we're gonna name this one knee ik dot r. So we're gonna be knee ik dot l. Uh, perfect. They are non-deformed bones since they're ik bones. Same with this one right here. Same with this one back here. All right. 
And now we're going to want to, oh, that's right, IK chains. So let's do the foot. Remember, you go to pose mode, select the IK bone, select the target. In this case, it's going to be the lower limb, the calf. Uh, shift I to active bone, and he goes all wonky. And since it's the foot, you're going to want to chain link the two. Remember, the middle limb, like elbows and knees, get one, and feet and hands get two. So do the same thing. We're going to select that one, then that one. Shift I, active bone, change it to two. He looks, he's looking a little stiff-legged there, isn't he? No, that's fine. We know it's going to get cleared up. So get that one, that one, shift I, active bone, and we only want one. That one, that one, that one, that one, shift I, and we want him to do one. All right. That's not quite looking right. I wonder if we did something wrong. There's all kinds of weirdness with this rig, especially since we have all these goofy little spine bones stuck stuck in here still, so not going to worry about it too much. That's kind of the way we want it, but we kind of want the foot to plant on the ground when he lands, so we need to kind of fix that. The way you fix that is you select the foot bone, and you go to the bone properties, you turn off inherent rotation. That actually kind of fixes it to make it sit flat on the ground again, which is kind of nice. Same with this one, turn off inherent rotation. Now, when you grab him, his feet will stay flat on the ground. Pretty frickin' handy right there. But what we want to do is create a hip root bone, which is kind of handy. We're just going to take the lowest one here, because this is generally where you do it from. So this is uh, this is nice, but you can't really control the hips too much. You know, you're you're it's not anything you're going to use in a robot to in a robot model too much. But you know, it's just good habits to get into, which is 90% of the stuff we do here is maintaining good habits. All right, so let's uh, take this uh, hip bone here. That's actually uh, pelvis. Yeah, we're going to call it. I call it, it's labeled pelvis here. It will be labeled pelvis in your models too, but I just call it hip, so just know that. Hit Shift D to duplicate it, and right click to leave it in there. So now there should be two pelvis bones. And then hit Alt F to switch, and that will make him upside down like that. So this guy is now, let's go back to the bone. We're gonna call him, we're just gonna call him pelvis root. And I, I will be referring to it as hip root for the most part. Um, now what this one is going to do is, well, let's, let's, let's finish making this one. So what you want to do is select the hip bone and then uh, shift click the root bone. Let's make sure we've got the right one there. Control P to parent and we'll keep them connected. So now what we will have is if we go into this mode, this is the normal uh, thing. And this way you can control from, well, that didn't quite work out, right? Let's turn off some of the rotation here. Uh, yeah, we want to make sure that when these are going on, that we don't want uh, we don't want these to actually inherit the rotation of all these things. So let's turn off inherit rotation. Rotate. See, there we go. That's what we're looking for. So now we can just do a little nice little shimmy. If we do this one, it does the same thing, and now you can control the torso up here a lot better. Rotate Z. You know, around he goes. You know, so the hands don't follow him, and we can do things to fix that too. Because generally, if you're going to be moving this torso bone here, I think it's going to be the same way here. Rotate Z. You want the hands to follow around as well, because that's they're they're attached. You're, I mean, there's a reason to not do it. Like if if you have these hands implanted into the guts of a mech, and you rotate the upper torso, you know he's his hands are going to be stuck there. So he's you know, if he turns his hand, I'll be stuck there. But for the most part, if you're just in walking around, it's that's not going to happen. Uh, so there's a, you need them both, but let's try and make this. Uh, let's finish getting this done here. All right. So what we want to do? Let's make the torso follow the hips. That's these are the torso bones right here. All these, all this glorious mess. And what we want to do is in pose mode, select the hip bone, and then torso bone. And we're going to sh control shift C to copy rotation. All right. But now that kind of screwed it up because we have to set the space that it's in. 
So you go to torso bone constraints, change these from world space to local space. It gets kind of weird when you do the first one, but by the time you get to the second one, it straightens it all back out again. I don't think we're going to need to do these the same way, but we'll just assume that that's right for now. All right. We also want to make sure to check the offset here too. Okay. Now I talked about isolating the hands before, and uh, for the same reason, like if you want to rotate the rotate the torso bone here, you want the hands to follow, or you'll actually have a slider that you can set to say how much it's going to follow, so you can do both of them at the same time. All right. Let's go to uh, you select the hand IK. These guys right here. Control Shift C, and you're going to do Child of Constraint for Influence. Child of, here we go. And we want to change the Child of, instead of Target of the Sum Empty, we want to do the Hips Root, which is, that should be the very front, and you're going to want to find Hips, no wait, what do we call that one? It's called Pelvis, VIP Pelvis Root. All right. And as always, every time you do something like that, it goes a little bit crazy. Uh, set the inverse, and then he comes back to the normal position. All right. Now you have this influence of that you can control with this slider. You can just set the zero or one. What happens is if you select torso bone and you rotate around the Z, when it's set to one, it's how does it go again? Uh, there's a one. It doesn't do it. And if you set it to zero. All right, maybe get, oh, I got the hips root. That's right. Rotate Z. Uh, did I do that wrong? Pelvis root. Yeah, influence of one. Let's do it this way. Now I'm going to rotate. Rotate Z. Rotate Z. Yeah. See, he's 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 following a little bit better. Of course, the uh, the other bones aren't following, which is kind of a pain. Maybe I don't want to set the hips root. Maybe I want to set it to, because the root is going to control. This is where it gets really complicated. You need to pay attention to what you're doing. And I might be a couple of rums into this that's affecting my judgment. But um, I'll play around with this and try and get it right. Let's try and do it on the other side real quick. So this one, uh, so hands IK, control shift C, child of. And then you're going to want to set the hips root. Target's going to be the armature. VIP pelvis root. And then you set inverse. There we go. So now we have the influence again. Um, see, it's not what I want it to look like. It's kind of what I want it to look like. You can tell that the um, if you draw a line between, you know, that by that bisects this bone as you rotate it in the Z direction. The hands are trying to follow it, but nothing else is trying to follow that one. So I think uh, for some reason, you know, let's, let's, let's try this. If we select this guy and then this one and do control P to keep offset, let's see if that works any better. See, now he's following a lot better. That's good. Whoa, get back here. Rotate Z. This one, they're still not following the root. This is turning the whole mech. That's not quite what we want. So we're getting closer, though. Um, let's see, is he inherent, uh, inheriting rotation? Maybe we do want to have him inherit rotation. There we go. Does that look a lot better? Sure does look a lot better to me. All right, so this is working a little bit better. Now when you rotate around the hips, uh, you can, oops, around the hips root, the hands are actually following. Now we wanted that to happen here too, but uh, since these guys are parented to that, to the root, that's not quite what we want. So let's go back here. Let's constraint, chain instead of pelvis root, we're gonna do BIP, uh, what is actually, hang on, what is this bone? This is BIP pitch. All right, let's do it that way. Change this from BIP pelvis 
VIP pitch, set inverse. All right, same with this one, VIP LVS, we're gonna do VIP pitch, set inverse, and now the influence is set to one. So if we rotate in Z, you know, he's not, he's still kind of twisting a little bit, but that might be because of the elbow IKs, and we can always fix that. If you go too far, it just goes crazy. DZ. Yeah, because you can only turn so much before everything else starts getting screwed up. Did everything get set to local space too? All right, good. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, we also have to set up the root bone, which we really haven't done yet. So in edit mode, you select the hips root right here, and then you select the shift select the root bone, and Control P, keep offset, and now the hip root is parented to this one. So if you grab this, he should be able to move around just like that. And then he lands on the ground. For some reason, the feet are no longer didn't. It looks like we kind of lost the inherit. Ah, they decided to inherit the rotation again. How did that happen? I must have undone some something too much. All right, so now we grab, and boom, there. Now he can jump and act like a proper battle master. All right, let's just uh, take a quick look at where we are. We have a uh, foot root bone, which we can uh, grab and move around like that. Here's the other one. We have a knee one, which we can use to twist the knees around. We have a couple of arm ones, which we can wave around like crazy. And wave our hands in the air like we just don't care. Uh, we have more torso bones that we know what to do with, but the important thing to remember is you have a hip root bone, which rotates around like that. Yeah, a hip bone, which rotates around like that. You can see they're kind of following the rotation. Yeah, that's kind of, I need to fix that up too. This one is inheriting the rotation a little bit of the one below it. Uh, but this one is not uh, doing it as much. And then this is just, you know, for some reason, oh, that's right, this clavicle, we want to actually change his parent to match this one, which is, Keep offset, make sure they point the same right. All right, so now if we rotate, it's just this upper torso part, which is fine. We're probably never gonna use these bones, but I don't wanna delete them either because all of a sudden things stop following them around. Uh, rotate, no, so these bones, we probably just wanna hide. Let's do, hang on, hide. We'll grab that, we'll move him up to make it a little easier to see as a torso. Move him up a little bit. Alright. Rotate. This seems to make a little bit more sense. Okay. Hand bones. Alright, we already talked about that. Alright, and there you go. You have a fairly decently rigged mech. Uh, why are these guys so high up in the air? I'll probably have this. Oh, when I move this up, everything decided to go up, probably. Yeah, see? This is just a mess. I probably should redo this from scratch. Let's undo a whole bunch of this. There we go, yeah. I just got moved around too much. Let's go back to pose mode. All right, rotate. He's only going to be rotating around the Z direction anyway. Rotate. Rotate. And you can tell the influence is set to follow that. All right, you know, it is it is what it is. Uh, all these lines really shouldn't be here. Uh, that's part of importing it as a collada. It just gets all screwed up. Um, but we do, for one final step, want to parent all the IKs to the root bone because that is the proper way of doing it. So in edit mode, edit mode, edit mode, edit mode, you want to select all the IKs that you made. Knees, feet, and shift select, your shift selecting, and make sure you select the hip root bone last, and hit control P, keep offset, and then all these little lines will start going to the hip root properly, as opposed to going to this, uh, all these objects, all these lines can be going to this 
a dot here at the very center of the, uh, of the model, which is kind of a weird thing, but this way they're going to fall a lot better. That's kind of weird as you're moving the hip hip bone around, these arms go flying. Yeah, it's just, there's there's problems when you import. You just need to work your way around them. Alright, so we're going to just actually call this done. I could, there, there's a lot of stuff you can do with animation. And animation is incredibly complicated. It's probably worth its own uh, series of um, videos on its own. Uh, j for the most part, you want to use a dope sheet, and you insert keyframes. It's a, you know, fairly. If you've ever used any sort of software that uses key keyframing, this is how you're going to want to do it. And you know, we can just do a very simple example of of waving, and uh, so you know, what you do basically is you you grab grab a bone. You're pretty much just going to want to grab the. Uh, the uh, IK bones and hit I to insert a keyframe. You can do the location or rotation. Location or rotation is generally a pretty good one to use uh, unless you're doing uh, certain things. Uh, and then that's where he is. And then say uh, if you do 30 frames per second, say 60 frames in, which is two seconds later, you want him to have his hands in the air, like giving a salute. Let's try and pose this right. Grab. Mm. Well, see, here's where you need to grab the elbow. Okay, let's go back to the root here. Insert a location rotation here. Actually, the elbow one, you probably just need a location. Mm. Let's go back to, oops. Uh, what happened to my little, there we go. Uh, let's go back to 60 seconds, because he's going to be giving a salute at 2 seconds in. And so we grab this. Where do we want this to be? Uh, grab... Hang on. Grab. There we go. Because his arm's gonna be like that. That's too far. There we go. Is that a pretty decent salute? I spent enough years in the Navy. I should frickin' know the answer to this. Move him down a little bit. Get that elbow up to make sure he's looking proper and sharp. All right. So then, at this point, you want to hit insert location rotation, insert location rotation. These uh, change from green to yellow when you have actually have a keyframe there. And then what's going to happen as you go between the two uh, the two keyframes, they're going to, um, it's going to transition between the start and the end. Now for some reason the IK uh, didn't, I didn't set a keyframe in his default so now his arms aren't in the right place. So, so hit Alt G and Alt R and hit to clear the rotation and location, hit I to insert a location rotation keyframe. There it is now, that little yellow dot. Uh, and now, as you scroll through, his arm goes up. Now this is a very basic animation. There's a lot of rules of animation where you want to do, uh, you know, when something starts moving, it tends to move back a little bit first and step into it. Uh, you can control the speed at which things are moving. And if you go to the graph editor on this one, you can see, you know, the the shallower the curve is, the slower it's moving. You know, this is moving the x direction a little bit quicker than in the z direction. Um, you can use uh, these. Uh, these are Bezier curves, so you can actually rotate this to change how it's looking. Actually, this is going to be the x one, so you can actually change some things like that. So you can make them move a lot sharper. You can actually grab these and move, move them, and it will actually reposition them on the screen too, which. You probably don't want to do too much. Let's undo those options right there. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff, and if you actually create a decent animation that you're that you want to use in the future, you can go back to the dope sheet, change this from dope sheet to action editor. You can give this one to. You can rename the action to something like salute. All right. Let's going to uh, click on the F here because that will free it up so that it won't get deleted if it's not actually being used in the animations. And again, let's so just show them so doing the salute there. And then let's open up another window here. This is going to be the non-linear action editor. Like I said, all these different uh, parts in here are all used for animation. But uh, you can um, basically take 
a bunch of different actions from the action editor that you did. Like if you have a walking animation, you can throw the walking animation in here over and over again. And then you throw the salute one in there and he will pop the salute when he does the walk. And then depending on if you have the salute above the the walk animation, it will take precedence for only the IKs that's affecting. So even though the walk will probably be affecting these because he's going to have some arm swing, uh, if you have the salute over it, when he gets to that part of the animation, he's going to he's going to snap that salute off. You're going to want to have a animation to return to a normal pose, which will turn him back to the walking mode. Uh, it's, there's so much you can do with this. It's, it's such a complicated uh, and in the, uh, it's it's such a complicated topic that I'm not going to go into it more than this right now. But um, it, it's there's a lot you can do, and I'm just going to leave it at that. So I know this was probably a little bit disjointed and rambling. Uh, the model didn't quite work as smoothly as I want. We do have to deal with a lot of issues with uh, having excess bones in the torso, which really messed up my workflow on this one. If you deal with uh, mechs like the cicada or the catapult, ones that actually don't have all these arms, you don't actually have to create uh, eye case for the arms in those because the you know for the catapult they they don't have arm motion they just have pods that just rotate up and down so all you really need is the uh, clavicle one and then since or I think it actually comes with a upper arm one and you can use that to control the pods or the arms in those mechs so if you're gonna start doing this I recommend uh, playing around with the with the, some of those armless mechs I shouldn't say armless uh, those fixed arm mechs like the cicada and the um, and the catapult and the locust uh, because that will that will make it a lot simpler you only really have to worry about the legs then you can start worrying about walk animations you can uh, do all kinds of fun stuff with that so well that's about all i have for tonight thank you for watching everyone uh, if you have any questions feel free to ping me on either the mwo forums or the star citizen forums i've got a thread on there as well that uh that deals with all this so i'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have about it uh, thanks again, and have a good day.